So that's the formula for photosynthesis. Now, if you want to make this glucose molecule to store that energy, you're going to have extra leftover oxygen. So you're going to have, uh, you got six of them in here, 18 go in, so you can have 12 left over. So it becomes six O2s, okay? O2 would be two oxygens stuck together, and you can have six of those, right? That's what we're breathing. We're breathing the oxygen that plants have given off when they do photosynthesis to make that stored energy for us to live on, right? So this oxygen and food thing goes together, right? So write this next part down. The, this energy plant store during photosynthesis is the power source for all life on Earth, including us, okay? Plants do it. This is, we're all tied together, right? So write this down, pause the video and write that down. I'm going to the next slide. We have the ability to release the energy that the plants store. It's the same process as photosynthesis. It happens in the mitochondria of our cells, but it's the reverse. Instead of it being making glucose, storing the energy, it's breaking the glucose apart to release the energy. Okay, so now we get to the second part. Every one of our cells does this. Every living cell on, on the planet does this, or at least all the complex cells that have a nucleus. Uh, have your pen and paper ready, because we're going to do this again, but it's the reverse, releasing the energy. Okay. Okay, so now we have the opposite of what plants do. Let's just say that's it, what we do, okay? So here's... you <laughs> okay there's you all right <laughs> okay uh it happens in every one of our cells this is a process called cellular respiration so what do we do here we have to breathe so let's go ahead and say we get the glucose we eat now, again, the food has more than just pure glucose in it. But when you, you know, if you go to the hospital and they hook you up to an IV drip because you can't eat because you're in a coma, it has pure glucose in it. Okay, so glucose is C6. What's the formula? H12O6. Okay, so the glucose you eat, right? And you also got to breathe, which you breathe, oxygen, O2 oxygen now o2 again it's called molecular oxygen o2 is when the two oxygens are attached to each other um so here we got that and then what we ends up doing inside of our cells we exhale co2 it is produced in the cell and then your circulatory system takes it and gets it out to your lungs so you breathe it out to get rid of it because it's a waste product but also the CO2, what it also makes is H2O, although, yes, we exhale H2O, but you just, you know, we're so full of water. All life takes place in the water, including us. But a lot of people don't really realize that, yeah, it makes H2O as well. God, well, let's look at the formula here then. This is called cellular respiration. And this is what happens in every one of our cells. Now, last year, unfortunately, we had the emergency, and so we didn't get to study cells. If it, my class, we would have dealt with that again. We, we did a little bit in chemistry, but we would have really hit it again when we did cells. The mitochondria is what does it. So now what we have is, notice the in and out of the cellular respiration is exactly opposite, reversed, of what it is in the uh, photosynthesis. Yes, exactly. Okay, so what do we have going in now is C6H12O6 plus, save a little room here, O2. We breathe, eat this, we breathe that, okay? And then cellular respiration. Oh, energy is released. So instead of sunlight energy going in, we got energy coming out. Energy. You know, sometimes it'll include, include that plus energy. Uh, and I might, we'll see if there's room. <laughs> 
Okay, so what ha ends up happening is they tear apart the glucose in the cells. The mitochondria rips these things apart and recombines them with the oxygen and stuff to make CO2. Okay, before we go any further, you got six carbons going in, right? So how many carbons have to come out? The answer is six. We got one carbon in each CO2. So how many CO2s are going to be produced by breaking apart one glucose? The answer is what? Six is correct. You got to have six carbons going in. You got to have six carbons coming out. So you're going to make six CO2s, right? Six, six. Okay. Now, what happens to the hydrogen? That's right. It becomes water. Okay. So plus, save a little room here, H2O. Okay. How many hydrogens are in a glucose? 12. How many hydrogens are in a water? Two. So two, you got to have 12 coming out. So how many waters are you going to have? Six. Because six times two is 12. There's the 12. Okay. All right. So now we got carbon dioxide and water. But hey, whoa, 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 wait a second. We only got six oxygens going in. How many oxygens have to come out? Six times two is 12. Six times one is six. 12 plus six is 18. We only got... Oh, <laughs> We're going to need uh, more oxygens, okay? We only have like, huh. So how many oxygens are going to have to go in there? Here's six. We need 18 total. So that's 12 more. Okay, so we need six O2. So we have those 12 oxygens. Are you following this? I hope so. Because six carbons, six carbons. Check. 12 hydrogens, 12 hydrogens. Check. Six oxygens. Oops, we need 18 oxygens. So there's where the other 12 comes from. This is why we have to breathe. We must breathe or we won't have oxygen in order to break apart the glucose. If you hold your breath after a few minutes of holding your breath, you will pass out. The reason you pass out is because the glucose in your brain can't get broken apart to produce enough uh energy to sustain your brain right your brain will you will pass out and then you start breathing again right and i don't recommend that you do that but this is the the thing is you can't get the energy from the food you eat unless you breathe oxygen this is why we have to breathe so this formula i don't know if you're kind of going whoa man this is really boring all these numbers and letters no 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 this explains so much of the world we live in this explains why we have to eat to get the energy of life and other you know materials but also why we have to breathe because if we don't breathe we can't get that energy from the food right and why we exhale co2 it explains why plants will give off oxygen and why they need CO2 so much. This sunlight energy goes into the system and here's where, where, you, where we use it in this process called cellular respiration. This is a beautiful thing. You might not think it is. <laughs> Maybe you don't see the elegance in it, but it's really there. Okay, this is like the most beautiful. Uh, the, these together, I'll even say, since they're just opposite each other are the most beautiful chemical reactions in the known universe, okay? I say, so this is why we have to breathe. And please write this down underneath the cellular respiration. It kind of sums it up. We have to breathe to get oxygen so that the energy stored in our food can be released. And again, that's why you know, when you're running really hard, what happens to your breathing? <sighs> you're trying to get enough oxygen to release that much uh, energy, right? That's why you breathe hard when you run.